Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another round of S and S. And as always, we got a lot, to, a lot of stuff to share this week. So we've got we've got a tool trade that's come in. We got some viewer mail, some really cool viewer mail, and just some nice gifts over there that I'd like to share with you this week. And I've got some machining that we're going to throw in there too. Some machining of some cast iron impellers. So we'll get all that in the mix, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy. So the uh, the campaign for the the hoodies and the t-shirts ended, and I just want to tell everybody that that participated there, thank you very much. The the hoodies seem to be a pretty big hit, which I, I assumed that they were going to be a better hit than the shirts this time, just because of it being winter time, and that's why we did it around this time. But uh, just thanks everybody that's been continuing to give in your support around here, and uh, you know through the t-shirt sales and. Uh, the patreon page over there just you know everything I really appreciate you guys and you know I never I never really acknowledged it on a on a previous video here but most of you are aware we finally hit a hundred thousand subscribers on the channel which is just amazing to me uh, I'm really I was really excited that day that it happened and and I, I still can't believe that that I've got that many subscribers uh, when I started doing this, this uh, making videos and you know putting videos on this channel here, it was, I, I had no intentions of it being what it is today. I really didn't. I just I thought I was going to be making a few interesting videos on cutting some metal because I didn't think there was a lot of it out there on YouTube yet. But what well, it's, it's just really grown into something awesome. And I've said it before. I've got friends all over the world now, and I just love it. It's great. So I'm really excited about this and I plan to continue. I just, I like to share with you the projects that I have and the projects that come into the shop. You know, I have jobs here and there that come in and, and I just enjoy sharing that stuff with you. And I, I, I try to, I try to show you guys that I just do things the way that I like to do it. You know, the way that I know how to do it the way that I was taught how to do things and I just try to pass what what I do over to you and and most of you guys seem to really appreciate that and really enjoy it it was it was really just kind of for entertainment you know and I I never intended for all of the videos to be more of an educational type format but that's how most people take it so I, I really try to explain things the best of my ability whenever whenever I'm actually doing things so I really appreciate all the support you guys give me I, I really do this is something great I look forward to this every week making videos for the channel and I'm always looking forward to the next project the, the next job that comes in that that I can take some video and share it with you on the on the channel it's just it's fun for me it's what I like to do and and uh, I don't know I just I can't thank you guys enough for all the support Real quick, if if you guys do Facebook, check out the A Bomb 79 Facebook page because I I try to post pictures over there regularly, and it's kind of like the in between stuff that you don't necessarily see on video here on YouTube. It's just day to day work, jobs that I might be on, and I just snap a few pictures up and I and I throw that stuff up there on the page and and as a way to kind of share other things that I'm doing that I don't actually get to put in the video. So go check that out. If you got a Facebook page, you might get some, a little bit of enjoyment over there too. All right. So let's go ahead and get through our tools and our viewer mail. So our first viewer mail we're going to go into, I got some really cool pictures here to share with you. And just a couple weeks ago, I shared a video on YouTube there of my, road trip over there to uh, Quincy and Tallahassee and Moultrie. Got a card up here if uh, if you want to click on that and check that out. On the way there, I stopped and visited a viewer named Mark Lindquist. And this is, this is a picture of he and I right here. This is one that he took out there on his porch. And I had a great time over there visiting Mark. And I think we became friends. And he is, uh, he's been really nice and printed out some pictures of Stella, which I showed in a previous video too. So he was, I took some pictures. If you watch the video, I talk about the, the new, the new car 
And when I was over there, he's got this really neat looking tobacco barn that is just a super awesome back set for a, a for foot photography, really. And I pulled up right next to it in the car and I was like, man, that's just a nice shot. So I took a couple pictures and he wanted to print them out for me, you know, so I could hang in the house there. This is another picture right here. This is one that he actually took himself. He's got some really, really awesome photography over on his website. Uh, I'm going to share his links in the video description, by the way. So, uh, Linquist Studios. That's a picture that he took of a bird. And it looked like it caught a crawfish there. This was out at Wakulla Springs, Florida. And he's got some of these other pictures like this on his website there. But I had showed, I told him, I was like, I like that picture there. So he printed that out and we'll, uh, we'll hang that up. So here's the two pictures that, I, two of them that I took with my iPhone. I didn't even get these with my good Sony. So that's one right there showing the tobacco barn in the background and uh, the car. And he did some, he did some cool editing on there. He did some Photoshop because there was a little tree right behind the car. And then one of the pieces of the tent up here on the on the barn was blown up also. So he made it look really nice. And that is just an awesome picture for in the house right there. And um, I'm going to talk about this here in just a minute about this barn. And then here is the uh, here's the other picture that I took there also of the car. And I just I just really like the backdrop there and the grass. So he was kind enough to print them out for me and put them in some frames. And sent them to me so very nice job mark thank you very much i want to i want to try to help mark out here real quick and and give him a mention and see if maybe we can find him some help so as you can see he's got this beautiful tobacco barn right here and he's currently he's got some of this tin that's blown up on it and he is having an extremely difficult time finding somebody a contractor, a, a carpenter, somebody, a roofing company that will come out and help him repair that. He just can't seem to find anybody out there. And that just seems weird that nobody's, there's nobody around to do it. So I was going to kind of give a mention here on the video. If, if you guys watching know of somebody or can give me or Mark a lead on somebody that may be able to come out and, uh, and help Mark fix this, you know, he's, he's looking for a contractor, you know, he's not looking for uh, somebody to come out there for free to do this, but you know, he's trying to find somebody. So if, if you could either email me or email Mark, I'll have his info in the video there and in the video description. Uh, it, it would be greatly appreciated if somebody can uh, help us find somebody to help him fix this barn right here, because if he can't get that roof fixed, he's having to, he might have to tear the thing down and we definitely don't want to see that happen. That's just too nice of a historical building to uh, tear down. But he just can't find anybody over there in Quincy that wants to do it. So uh, I'll have my email and his stuff down in the video description. If you know anybody or have a lead on somebody, uh, he's in Quincy, Florida, which is sort of like in the middle north part of Florida, South Alabama, South Georgia, that vicinity right there. So I'd really appreciate it. And I'm sure Mark would too. So Mark, appreciate it, man. That uh, the pictures turned out great. So we got a little group of tools right here that are very, very cool and unique. These are all made by Bonnie, which is, uh, they're, they're not in business anymore. And it was another one of the companies that made some really nice tool back in their day. So this stuff right here is some tools that was sent to me by my viewer, Mark Walraven, and Mark was the one that sent me this really nice nylon hammer a while back that I regularly use around here in season videos. But in his letter, he was telling me that the, uh, the company that he works for over in the Netherlands is Unisys, and they joined with two other companies called Sperry and also Burroughs. And they used to work on mainframe computers. But Unisys used to be or is in a, a U.S.-based company, and they no longer have a need for imperial size tooling, which is what all this stuff is right here. So 
he says this stuff was actually just getting thrown away. You know, he thought that I might like it, so he packaged it up and sent it over here to, to uh, let me have it. These are some nice little T-handles right here, and I don't think I have any of this size. They're like quarter quarter inch drive. So that's some very clean, nice tools from Bonnie right there. This says 1952, but I have no idea if that's actually like the year that this was made. I, I, I can assume so because I know that they were making tools back in those days there. So, Mark, very cool. Thank you very much for the tools. And no package from the Netherlands would be complete without some Stroop waffles. Check them out. <laughs> Last time he sent the hammer, he sent a pack of Stroop waffles, and these things are amazing. So, not that I need them, Mark, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. So this is the, the tool trade item that I got in this week. And this was a, one of my viewers, his name is uh, Richard Patrick. He's from Senatobia, Mississippi. And Richard is a farmer. And he has got, like most of us, he's got a nice shop you know, collection of tools and he does all his own work and his maintenance and stuff. But he says that he doesn't like to have tools that he's not gonna use. So. This was a particular tool that he had acquired in a toolbox that he had purchased that he says that he's not going to use. So he asked me would I be interested in a tool trade and I told him absolutely. So what we got here is virtually a brand new Starrett number 260 groove micrometer. I'll try to get you a shot so you can see it, see it pretty good here. things in excellent condition I don't know if it's ever been used really you know the box doesn't show any kind of wear on it or discoloration from dirty hands being on it so I, I'm assuming that I've got a brand new mic right here but these uh, these groove mics are a very nice tool to have they're very useful around the the machine shop particularly things like uh, you know grooves so if you're if you're cutting some say some internal grooves you really don't have a good way to get in there and measure groove widths or if you've got a part that you're trying to check and measure and see what they are I use these mics quite a bit at work I've got a set there and I use them to get in there and measure the groove widths or the land widths which is the area between the grooves they're very useful for things like that uh, here recently uh, one of my viewers, Peter Meek, he had, made, he had made a good point when I was doing the square threading video that I could have used this inside that shaft to measure the thread width as I was widening it out. And he, and he made a good point. I didn't think to pull one out and, and use it. But uh, anyway, we got, we got this in a tool trade right here. And I'll show you what I'm trading, Richard. And that is, let me move this over. This nice set of brown and sharp calipers, these are the 578. And these calipers here was another one of those flea market finds that, that I got. I got them out there and I just put them in the, the uh, toolbox down at the end of the shop and I haven't, I haven't used them. I'm, I don't really use the dial calipers too much. I've got my Starrett dial calipers that were my dad's over there, some that I had bought for him. I use those sometimes but I just don't ever use these right here, but these are still like new. They're still pretty tight. And something that's neat about these is that it's got this fine adjust, which I've never seen before on a, on a dial caliper. So you can tighten this, this one up right here and move that with your thumb to get your fine adjust. So anyway, you know, Richard had asked me if uh, I wanted to do a tool trade, and I said, yeah, what, what kind of tool are you looking for? And he said he was looking for some decent dial calipers, nothing fancy, but this is really the only one that I got. So I, said, I asked him if he'd be interested in it, and he said absolutely. So there we go. There's our little tool trade. Tool trade for the week, our Starrett 260 Groove Mic for the Brown & Sharp 578 caliper. Real quick, I was going to mention this. So this Mitchatoya right here, this is one that I've already had. 
and I've showed it I think once or twice on video for a couple of jobs in the past but this is Mitch Atoya so there's his number 146-102 these both of these are zero to one inch but I like both of them the Mitch Atoya is a little bit bigger a little bigger feeling but they both work great I got this Mitch Atoya at a pawn shop and I didn't pay much for it I think I paid like 25 bucks for it so I got a good deal on that so I meant to mention that there a minute ago all right so this is our next viewer mail that come in this is from Howard Hoover up in Indianapolis Indiana and what Howard has sent me we got a we got something else right there in the in the envelope by the way he is known as moms on YouTube mail order machine service so this guy right here this is a small uh, model size of a, a Mopar engine block so Howard's grandfather worked at the foundry there in Indianapolis where they where they casted all of the the blocks for you know Dodge Chrysler I assume and he had a bunch of these. His grandfather had a lot of them, and, and now Howard's got a bunch of these. And, and he actually sent me some, uh, some pictures where he's done some machining on these little blocks. And one of them, he plans to actually finish and build into a model engine, a complete model engine. But he, he thought it would be interesting to send me one. He thought that I might like one, so that's what he's done. So we've got a little engine block there for a, a, a Dodge V8. And then we got this cool pin right here, Mopar Nationals from 1996. That's pretty neat. And there's some other uh, cars and stuff in here that, that he included with the, with the stuff. And he told me in his letter, he said, just uh, if I have a nephew or something, just give them the, the cars right here. So let's see. There was something else that he had in here, and I believe it was a sticker. Yep. So there's his... Uh, there's a sticker right there. Chrysler Power and Performance Parts. That's pretty neat. And then here's one of his cards right here. So Howard, that's pretty cool, man. I, this this is some neat stuff, and I appreciate the uh, the picture that you sent in the email. So very neat. Something interesting to have. So I'll I'll enjoy having that. Thank you very much. All right, so one more nice tool that we got in this week. This is sent in by Ernie Haynes out of Lakeland, Florida. Ernie sent me an email. He was watching my recent videos. And when he said that, when he heard me say that I didn't have a temp test indicator, he sent me an email and said that he had an extra one that he doesn't need that he wanted me to have. So he sent along this really nice Interapid. This is a let's see 312 the 312 b3 and it's a 10th reading indicator test indicator in really nice shape so that would be great Ernie thank you very much next time we have a, a need for some really fine indicating We'll pull this one out and we'll give it a try. Very cool. Thank you very much. So this is the last little bit of the tools for the week. And this right here is just a, a little flea market score from last weekend that I thought I would share with you. This all came from, one, from the same guy. And it was a pretty decent little score. So we've got this magnetic indicator base made by Jim. And that one's made here in USA, Cleveland, Ohio. And then this little guy right here, I thought that was pretty neat. I had to include that too. It's got a, a central indicator on it that still works, but obviously it's going to need some work. It doesn't have a crystal and it's dirty. It's a little sticky. But I like the little, the little magnetic base that it was on. I thought that was pretty nice. And we can definitely use that for something around here. And then I was digging through the stack, and he had these three... Uh, spring-loaded center punches right here and they all work but the a couple of them the tips need to be reground on them they gotten a little dull so I picked all those up since I seen them there 
This is just a magnet right here, and this is a craftsman. It looks like it might have been around a little while. And then we've got one of these thread chasers. I believe that's made by Buckingham. And these thread chasers, you just kind of screw in around your threads. And inside there, you got one that actually does the, like the chasing, the cutting. And then you got one that follows it that kind of lines it up. And those move. So you can kind of line up on different thread pitch. And then you got guides on the other side there. And you just kind of tighten it up around your thread. And you just, let's see which way. I think you turn it that way, clockwise, and the thread chaser. So that was my little score from the flea market there. I believe all this together right here was $32.